everyone, welcome back to Gypsy Day Creations. Tiara here, and I am wearing my tiara. That's because I woke up today to the royal wedding, beautiful pictures, beautiful videos, and a beautiful bride, and I gotta say, a very handsome prince. Um, <laughs> so I was kind of inspired by today's events, and I wanted to make a soap about it, about Miss Meghan Markle herself, the Duchess of Sussex. So I'm going to be making a hello smudgy. What do you want? There's always gotta be. Oh, I was at that attention. Um, yeah, today I'm making a royal wedding soap. I haven't quite came up with a name for it yet. Um, might even call it just like the Duchess. But I'm not feeling so princessy today, and I will get into that story later. It's been a very interesting day. But it has been full of beautiful images of the royal wedding, and it's just so magical. So let's get started. of the wedding favors that I made for a custom order and I didn't quite know what to do with them. I can't give them out as samples because obviously I'm not selling this fragrance or these soaps. kind of held on to them and I thought it would be appropriate with this soap to cut them up and add them into the batter just because they were wedding part of wedding favors and this is going to be a wedding soap. And it's kind of like a confetti soap to where I can reuse different soaps and incorporate them into a new one. So I'm just cutting each one of these up into little squares. And I'm going to throw them into the batter and mix them in so that when I cut them, they'll make little different chunky square designs in the loaf. Waste not, what not. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut all of these up. And once I'm done, I'll bring you back for the rest of the soap making. Okay. So I've got them all cut up. Just get my gloves on here. And I put them all in a bowl. Now I did calculate the weight of these and minus it from the weight of my oils when I was measuring my oils. I did subtract that so there's less batter to work with here because this is going to take up a lot of room. And then I've got my live water solution, a little bit of sodium lactate in there and a little bit of titanium dioxide. And we're just going to give this a whirl, get it to a light trace. Okay, so I am going to add a little bit of color to this. I just got some new powder, my good powders from uh, Nurture Soap, but this one's called Oleander. And it's kind of like a very, very light pink. It's actually really pretty, and I thought it would complement that uh, soap in bed pieces that I'm putting in. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that and see what it looks like. All right, let's just clean that off. I don't think I'm going to use this anymore. And the fragrance I picked, I just have, you know, a few bottles of random fragrances laying around for moments of creativity, like today. And it is a pink watermelon and apricot fragrance from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And it's got watermelon, apricot, apricot and a little bit of floral nuances in there. So I thought that would complement the original fragrance that was in this. It's kind of a, a floral, fruity. I'm going to pour some of this in here. The rest of it I will actually put into the icing. And I'm just going to mix this all up. Number one reason why I'm not feeling like a princess today is we went to bed probably about 2 o'clock in the morning 
We tried to do way too much last night. We went to karaoke with some friends and family members, and then we went over another friend's house and hang out with them for a little bit. And I didn't get home till by two o'clock. So we had a very light, late night and a late start this morning. So I did not get to stay up and watch the live royal wedding because again, two o'clock, I was I was pretty tired and four o'clock time here is what time I would have had to get up to watch it. So it just, it wasn't happening. All right, I'm going to pour probably about half of this in here. And then I'm going to bring in for a closer look at the pour. So I'm going to pour about half of this batter in without making a mess. Ha ha. And then I'm going to let it sit for a little bit before I start putting in the other in bed pieces because I, I really want them to float and not all sink down to the bottom. What mess? I don't see a mess. I don't make messes. I think I need larger molds. Like maybe the width of them is just not there and I that's why I keep missing them and just pouring it all over the table. I don't know if that is the opposite and I'm just going to make more of a mess. But one day I think I'm going to invest in two larger molds. Right now I am happy at the rate that I'm soaping at because this is working out. And let me just show you some of the embeds that I have for the top of it. I've got some little white hearts that have a little bit of a sparkle in them and then I have some rings. Aren't they too cool? They are soap rings. It's amazing the molds I find laying around my house. When you're a soaper, you just collect everything you possibly think would make a perfect mold. And I had that laying around, so I was like, I'm doing it. All right, so I'm just gonna start placing some of these soapy pieces in here, randomly. Plop some in there. So yeah, we didn't get to catch the royal wedding, but I did make breakfast this morning and sit down and watch it on YouTube. They have like the replay. Another reason why I'm not feeling so princessy is I had to make breakfast and I didn't have to make breakfast, but you know, it's Saturday and I don't have time to do that any other day of the week to make a good breakfast. And I made some scrapple and some bacon and some eggs for Bradley and I, and I got a little burnt. I had a piece pop up and get me on my hand, and that really hurts. Grease, hot grease on your hand, it it's not fun. So that, that upset me. <laughs> and then I didn't have my hot sauce because I had a bridal shower that I went to the other weekend, and I'd let, you know, let them borrow it because it was a huge bottle of hot sauce. And I forgot to get it back, so I didn't have any hot sauce in the house, and I threw a little bit of a fit. I was sad. Breakfast just wasn't the same. And we sat and talked about the royal wedding, and all the royal people who attended, and all the famous people that were there, and had a nice little chit chat over breakfast. It was nice. And then I decided, all right, time to soak. I asked Bradley to go downstairs in the basement and grab me the large crock pot from down there for today's Sophie Adventures. And he's like, don't go downstairs because it's flooded. We have kind of an old house. It's built in the 1950s and it's been raining for like a week. It's awful. I haven't seen sunshine in forever. And there's some flooding, but it is now flooded in our basement. I mean, the sump pump just decided it didn't work. There was like inches of water in the basement. There's carpet ruined. There's a mattress down there that's ruined. Luckily, nothing, you know, very important got ruined, but it was kind of like great. 
this is what I wanted to do on my Saturday. And we have a couple boxes of very, very old antique books from like sh works of Shakespeare from the 1800s that were downstairs in boxes. And they got a little wet. And that was the first thing I was like, we need to get these out of these wet boxes. We need to get them separated, dried out, wiped down, make sure they aren't ruined because they are very valuable and special books. And it was bound to happen if I left them down in that poor basement. But I didn't want to take them out of the boxes quite yet because if we were moving, there's no point. We are talking about moving at some sometime this year. And I just thought we would leave them in there until we got to our next house and have a better place to put them. But they made their way upstairs and a couple of them are a little questionable, but the rest of them are fine. They'll be okay. I rescued them. So it's been an interesting morning so far. All right, I'm going to give that a whack. And then I'm gonna go get the icing together. Okay, so I got the icing together and I've put a little bit of ultramarine pink in there and I'm using a Wilton 1A tip, just a very large round tip. And before I do this, I'll just give it a little spray of piece isopropyl alcohol. And we'll get started on the icing. Doing the dollops. Just like that. So a lot of people are saying, why bother watching the royal wedding? What's the point? It doesn't pertain to you. Don't worry about it. And I think that's silly. At least tell that to 16-year-old me who had a Union Jack on her birthday cake because I just love everything about Britain and the food and the music and the actors and there's some really cute, cute people who come out of Great Britain. Just saying. <laughs> Ed Sheeran. <clears throat> um, so I will argue that. I think it's cool and unique and since you know everywhere does things differently we don't have stuff like that in the US and it's fun to watch and you know get an idea of what they do over there and not to mention that Meghan Markle which if you didn't know her first name is really Rachel she is American she is from the US so I think it kind of does pertain to us just saying and it's it's new it's unusual you know the the, the prince marrying an american actress it's kind of something to talk about that's all and it's gorgeous it's such a magical thing i just love everything about it from her dress that was very elegant to the church that they got married in you know all the history that's in there and I know I've mentioned in a previous video that England's on the top of my list as far as the next place to visit. Like I love history and medieval stuff and I want to go to, to England and London and, and be that tourist and explore everything that's there and eat everything I can. So that's just me but the church they got married in was awesome and they just seem like very beautiful people you know lives that I know I'll never get, get to live um you know I don't see myself ever being a princess but it's it's just nice to, to watch and the kids can we just talk about princess charlotte and how adorable she is like she is the cutest. I feel like every time I see a picture of her, she is waving at someone. I feel like they're going to be in trouble with her because she's so personable and outgoing and she just seems to be so friendly. I mean, what little girl is okay with waving with random strangers every time she's out in public? She's just adorable. Okay, enough about that. Let's get to the top of the soap here. It's gonna be a very high top soap. This smells so good. To the 
chicken bits. I think I'm going to put, look, they're already slipping out of my hands. I think I'm going to put the rings on one side. this. You guys know how awesome I am at lining up in beds. Not really. So I'm sure these are all going to get cut. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. I just love this ring mold. It looks so real. Imagine sitting in that church. I'm sorry I'm going on about this again, but just imagine being one of those lucky people who get to sit in on that church. They just made, they even incorporated so many different, I don't know, things that that weren't normally in previous royal weddings. Just the music and the dress and even, I don't know, it was just so magical. I couldn't imagine being one of those people sitting in that church because I was getting emotional just watching it on YouTube. I would have been a mess. And the, the way that Harry and Megan just look at each other, like they're just so smitten with each other. I love it. They're over the moon for each other. And I'm just really happy for them. All right, and I'm gonna top this off then with a little bit of sparkly glitter. And that is that. I'll let this sit for 24 to 48 hours and I'm gonna come back and cut it. All right, let's see if I can cut this and not mess it up. It is very, very humid still and a lot of my soaps are sweating. So that's not fun. Let's take a look at this guy. There we go. I like it. It's very subtle. Everything about it is very subtle. It kind of reminds me of Megan's veil. How her dress was very simple. There wasn't too much going on. But her veil apparently had a lot of detail in it. Even the arm on my cutter is really stiff. I'm ready for this weather to get, get itself together. <clears throat> I'm not gonna cut all of this because it's, it's kind of the same looking on the inside. Let's see if you can get a, get a good view of that. Just the little chunks in there add a little color. It's adorable. watchers that leave comments quite regularly and we converse over multiple videos and about previous topics and other videos one of them being in hippie chick we were talking about gardens and I was mentioning some of the flowers in my yard one of them being peonies and how it's never bloomed and it's you know it's really upset me well go figure this year it has finally bloomed and it has some flowers on it that are just starting to open up. But I had um, a user named, I have to look at her name real quick. It is Lyndall Hildebrand. She gave me some really good advice on peonies. She mentioned that sometimes they do take about three years to bloom and it's probably been about four years so this will be like the fourth year since I've planted it and I forgot what color the peonies were so they're blooming and it's kind of a surprise and then I was talking to Cheryl she's another um, subscriber and we were talking about hibiscus and she kind of in inspired me to want to plant some hibiscus 
And I told her as well that the peonies bloomed and she wanted to know what color they were. So when I'm done cutting a few more slices of this, I'm going to give you guys a little garden tour of some of the things that I have growing and some of the DIY projects that I've done and I have done. And also what color the peonies are. Because it's finally stopped raining. It's been raining for a good four or five days and the sun's finally out. So I can finally go outside. It's great. I don't know what blue skies are anymore. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to show you guys this one. This last one before I go take you on a mini garden tour. Love it. If you guys want to buy the soap, it will be in the shop on June 6th. And I'm just going to probably name it Duchess. I think Duchess is nice. I really like the top of it too. Yep. Alright, garden tour time. Before the neighbor starts mowing the lawn, I've got my hydrangea and my pretty clematis. I love the star design in the sky. I'm gonna be really sad to leave him. But here's the big mystery peony. What color are they going to be? They look like they're gonna be a light pink. Like it looks white or like a light pink color. But there's a few other, where are they? Like this guy. A late bloomer but he'll be something so I'm super happy my peonies finally blooming and then I've got these hostas over here that grow back every year and then I just feel the need to have to share this with you I bought this drawer and like a, a Michaels I think and it was half off and it's supposed to be one of those fairy garden accessories and I bought these from Lowe's these little succulent guys and then my friend Maria found these at the dollar store she gave me these it's really cool but this is the showstopper right here the mother-in-law gave me this little round it was like a fairy kid play set and it was all styrofoam and dried moss and I ripped it all out and I put real dirt in it and I made a little fairy garden with some real succulents in it. How cool is that? And then I've got some aloe plants. I bought two of these. And then I had another little succulent that I didn't know what to do with. So I threw him in here. He's a little crazy. But just, just a little DIY of things I like to do other than soap. This guy's really cute too. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. I'd love talking with you guys. And until next time, smell you later.